Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Today we are continuing our studies on sickle cell anemia. Now sickle cell disease is a hereditary disease of the red blood cells. These red blood cells with sickle cell disease are curved. They're not round like most red blood cells are. And because they're curved rather than round, it makes it difficult for these red blood cells to pass through the blood vessels. And because these red blood cells carry oxygen, these patients with sickle cell disease have a decrease in their oxygen levels. And these sickle cells don't last very long because they become blocked and they die off, those cells. Now sickle cell trait occurs when a child receives the genetic trait from only one parent. Patients with sickle cell trait do not generally develop sickle cell disease. Okay. I experienced that when I met my husband and got married and we had our son. When I took my son to his two-week checkup, the doctor informed me that my son had sickle cell trait. Well, I don't have sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease, um, so I knew my husband had to have it. And sure enough, he, is a sickle, he carries sickle cell trait. So I've educated my son so that in the future when he meets his wife, to find out whether or not she's got the trait so that they can better prepare because two parents with the trait have a minimum of a one in four chance of having a child with sickle cell disease. So it's very important that you educate your children on this. Now when the medical record contains both terms, sickle cell trait and sickle cell disease, as a coder I code just the sickle cell disease. It's kind of understood that you go with the, the, the higher degree. For example, if I have a burn on my hand, if I have a first, second, and third degree burn in one location, I code it to the highest level of the burn because it's understood when I treat that high level burn, that third degree burn, then it will treat the second and first degree burns. Whereas if I code it just a first degree burn and treat it first degree burns, I still have not treated the second or third. So per coding guidelines, I code it to the highest level. Okay. And when you hear about the term crises, they have sickle cell disease crises. Crises refers to a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. So when these patients are in crises, just know that they're having probably the worst time when, as far as their sickle cell disease is concerned. Because remember, they're born with it. They've got sickle cell disease, but it's when they go through crises that they actually get admitted to the hospital because that's the time when it's the most difficult. Okay? Hope that makes a little better sense when it comes to that. So a code from subcategory D57.0, HBSS disease with crises, or subcategory D57.21, sickle cell HBC disease is assigned when vaso-occlusive crises, which is a clot or a thrombosis, or other crises are present. Now these subcategories are further subdivided to specify the type of crises, such as an acute chest syndrome. Then that's when the patient has a fever and they start having respiratory symptoms because remember, that oxygen is not getting through the blood vessels. They're not getting their oxygen levels that they need. Um, or splenic sequestration. That's when your sickled red blood cells become trapped in the spleen, causing the spleen to enlarge and get damaged and not work. So if a condition such as a cerebrovascular embolism or a stroke occurs, a code should also be assigned to indicate its presence. Another possible type of sickle cell disease is sickle cell thalassemia. Specific codes are available for sickle cell thalassemia with crises and without crises. Other sickle cell disorders include HBSD disease and HBSE disease. And these are abnormal hemoglobin protein, red protein, that's responsible for transporting oxygen. Now thrombocytopenia is a deficiency in blood cells that help the blood to clot. Think of hemophilias. When children who are born and they have the hemophilia, you have to be careful on the playground because if they fall and get hurt to a point where they start to bleed, they will literally bleed out. Their blood doesn't clot. So they have to go in and get some type of a medication to help their blood to clot. So these are, and other, it's called coagulation defects. 
they're characterized by a prolonged clotting time. Think about a patient that's on blood thinners, for example, Coumadin. If a person on blood thinners cut their finger, when you or I would normally stop bleeding after a few seconds to a minute, they will bleed and bleed and bleed because of that blood thinner in their system. All right. So when you and I bleed, we can actually see the tissue thickening at the site. And with that thickening, it decreases the blood flow. Well, when patients are on thinners, blood thinners, or their hemophiliacs, they don't have that, 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 that um, ability to coagulate for their blood to, to, to clot. Okay? And then there's something else called sarcoidosis, which is a disease of gradual onset in which they have an abnormal collection of inflammatory cells. And these cells then form nodules in many organs of your body. All right, so again, these are diseases of the blood and blood forming um, systems. And it's vital as a coder that we understand this so that we know where in the chart to look for definitive resources. We know to look in the lab values for a decrease in hematocrit and hemoglobin. We understand that these patients are going to have respiratory problems because of the red blood cells that aren't able to produce the oxygen that the um, body needs, right? That's why I always tell you guys, apply yourself with this knowledge as we cover these chapters so that it'll help you as you're reading the chart to understand what's going on and to confirm your diagnoses. Okay, guys? Now, what I'd like to do next is give you a scenario, give you five scenarios to code. So if you will, pull out your code books. And as I show you these five scenarios, um, pause your video and write down these five diagnoses that I'm going to give you so that we can go back and code these. Okay? Number one, pancytopenia congenital. And remember we said in our last video, pancytopenia meant a deficiency of your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. Number two, classic hemophilia. And remember I just told you hemophilia, those patients don't have the clotting and they will actually bleed out. Number three, Myelophthisic anemia. And myelophthisic refers to bone marrow. Okay. Number four, anemia, chronic, secondary to blood loss due to adenomyosis. And adenomyosis is a gynecological condition and it's a deficiency of your endometrial tissue. So, number four again says, Anemia, chronic, secondary to blood loss due to adenomyosis. And number five, anemia, hypochromic, okay, less color, microcytic, small, with iron deficiency. Again, anemia, hypochromic, microcytic, with iron deficiency. All right, so let's pull out our code books. ICD 10 CM. And let's code these. Okay, so looking back at our first one pancytopenia congenital. Let's look up main term pancytopenia. So, under our main terms, pancytopenia, and it said congenital right there. We're under main term pancytopenia. We're looking for subterm congenital. Okay, D61.09. Second one was classic hemophilia. We've got main term hemophilia. Add these 
these tags, but I want you guys to see me actually code these. H-E-M-O. Main term. Hemophilia. And it's classic. So go under subterms till you find classic. Oops, there it is. It's a non-essential modifier. So it leads us to code. D66. Now, I could also look under here under the subterms and see if I see classic, but it's not there. So I knew that and let me know then. Go and look at my non-essential modifiers. There's classic hemophilia. D66. Okay. Next one we had was myelophthisic anemia. So it's a form of anemia. So I look at main term. Anemia. Anemia. Mile off this it. D6182. See that? We're still under main term anemia. Subterm mile off this sick. Okay. And the fourth one was anemia, chronic, secondary to blood loss due to adenomyosis. So I need to go to anemia. So I'm still in the main term anemia. Secondary. Come down to secondary. Right there. Blood loss, chronic, D50.0. You can see that? Put my finger on it so you guys can see that. Secondary, blood loss, chronic, D50.0. And it said, due to adenomyosis. So I need to add in the adeno. Capture that as well. Adenomyosis. Adenomyosis in eighty point zero. So I need the two codes D fifty point zero and N eighty point zero. And then the last one, anemia, hypochromic, microcytic. So go back to anemia, hypochromic. Right there. Anemia, hypochromic, microcytic, and it's D50.9, and it says with iron deficiency. So if I stayed under anemia and iron deficiency, it gives me the same code D50.9, so I am correct at either one of them. Because it's giving me the same code D50.9 under iron deficiency as well as hypochromic microcytic D50.9. Okay, guys, that's it. I will see you in the next one.